Rafi, how are you, sweet boy? It's Abba, and I got this book for you. It's called uh, Attack on Pearl Harbor. I know you like uh, history. I know you like uh, learning about things like that. So here's the book. Okay, Attack on Pearl Harbor, the true story of the day America entered World War II. This was a... Uh, sort of a picture of when the Japanese are attacking the island in Hawaii. It's a naval base. In any case, we'll start reading to you. Attack on Pearl Harbor. The true story of the day America entered World War II. Okay. Ooh, here's a good picture. Part 1. Peter Nottage shoved his surfboard into the back of the family Buick. His black cocker spaniel uh, baby girl bounced and stiffed as she always did when she saw the car being packed. I'm just going to move this over a second. Hold on. So it's right underneath. There we go. That's a little better. Hold on. I'm going to close this one over here. Move this out of the way. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now let me just straighten up here. Okay, there we go. Okay. Peter, uh, 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 his black cocker spaniel baby girl bounced and sniffed as she always did when she saw the car being packed. It was December 6th, 1941. Finally, Saturday morning, and Peter could toss his shoes into the back of his closet for the weekend. That was the only problem with being in the seventh grade at Punahou School in Honolulu. Starting in the seventh, seventh grade, students had to wear shoes. But shoes just got in the way of all the things you had to do when you lived in Hawaii, like swimming in Manoa Stream, or racing leaf boats in the pond below the falls, or hiking through the woods looking for kukui nuts. All the boys liked to polish them up with breadfruit leaves to make slides for their Boy Scout handkerchiefs. And you certainly didn't need shoes on Waikiki Beach, where there was always plenty to do, swim, surf, canoe, or just sit and stare at the tourists at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. Most of all, Peter loved to watch the wife, Hawaiian fishermen bring in their catch. Okay. It's a picture of the kid that we're talking about right now. Who's? Because they're describing like a typical day that he went through in Pearl Harbor in, in, uh, in Hawaii. And then obviously war breaks up. Okay, here's another picture of Pearl Harbor. It's just a very, very beautiful place. See guys, guys surfing there. See the beach, people. There was the ships. Okay. Uh, the fishermen, they gave him free fish if he helped pull in the nets. Ever since the fourth grade, Miss Pukui had been teaching the Punahou students all about Hawaiian culture. She had told them how her ancestors had first come to the islands from the south, crossing thousands of miles of open sea in their swift sail rig canoes. The Hawaiians came from a long line of expert fishermen and boatsmen. Mrs. Ona Mrs. Nottage came out of the house with the family's Japanese maid, Fumi, who was carrying a pile of beach towels. Peter's mother frowned when she saw the surfboard leaning against the back seat, but Peter was too excited to notice. The Nottages were going to spend the weekend with friends. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell had an elegant home on Kanahu Bay, just a 45-minute drive from Honolulu. Peter loved visiting the Mitchells. Not only was their first-rate surfing at nearby Kailu 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 Kailua Bay, but there's also a big naval air station right across the bay from the Mitchell house. He had heard that the Navy had a whole new fleet of seaplane stationed there, and he couldn't wait to see them. These days, you could often watch planes practicing their maneuvers and drills all over the island. Sometimes the flyers even shot at each other with fake smoke. Okay. Okay, here's the island of Hawaii. And this little thing here, this dot, that's where the naval base was, where all the ships were. 
And here, on the smaller picture, you can see where all the different battleships were. They called it Battleship Row. It says the California, the Maryland, the Oklahoma, the Tennessee, the West Virginia, the Arizona. These are these things over these things over here. Let me get my finger. Let me find it. Hey, where is it? Oh yeah, here we go. Nope, wrong side. Oh, there we go. These things over here, these are ships. These are, represent the, this is where the, all the battleships, the American battleships were. These little black things here. Those are all battleships. Those are, the battleships are the real big, big warships that the Americans had. And there were, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Okay. And here's a picture of the boy again on his boat. This is the guy Peter who sort of was telling the story a little bit or okay Peter knew why there was so much activity on the bases he had heard the grown-ups talk about a possible war with Japan even now the Japanese ambassadors were in Washington trying to come to an agreement that would keep both countries out of the war it was true that many of Peter's friends were Japanese Americans whose parents had come to Hawaii many years before to work on the sugar cane and the pineapple plantations. But they were just the buddies he swapped homework or played car hardly baseball with. They were hardly the enemy. Now we switch. Commander Mitsuo Fuchida was worried. He stood on the bridge of the aircraft Akagi and carefully scanned the great Pacific Ocean. The six carriers of the Japanese fleet had reduced speed so they could take on fuel one last time. If the refueling was successful, the fleet would push south to Hawaii, where Fuchida and his pilots were planning to change the course of history. In 24 hours, they would launch a surprise attack on Pearl Harbor, dropping bombs and torpedoes on the Pacific base of the U.S. Navy. He knew it was an extremely dangerous mission. In order to cross the ocean to Hawaii, the fleet had to refuel twice on the high seas a risky operation unless the water was calm, and penetrating Pearl Harbor itself was no easy task. The entrance was narrow and well patrolled, and the harbor was extremely shallow. Normal torpedoes dropped from the air would get stuck in the muddy bottom before they had a chance to move forward. The Japanese hoped they had solved this problem. They had invented a torpedo with special wooden fins so that allowed it to be launched in shallow water. But the torpedoes only worked if the planes came in very low and at a very slow speed, making them an easy target for anti-aircraft guns. Fuchida scanned the skies, looking for signs of American planes while the refueling took place. The Japanese were well within the area patrolled by the United States each day. If the fleet were sighted, it would head straight back to Japan. The mission would be canceled, and all these months of training and preparation would be for nothing. Here's a picture of the Japanese that they're talking about. The rising sun. See, this is this is a picture of a map. This is this is where the well Pearl Harbor was out here on the island of Oahu. See, there's Japan. This is across the ocean, over there. And the Japanese fleet crossed a good part of the Pacific Ocean. And then you see over here, over here, this is the main, main part of the United States, in any case. The rising sun. This is the, this was the, that's the, uh, that was the flag of Japan. It looks like the rising sun. In 1941, far away from the Hawaiian Islands, the world was already at war. By the summer of 1940, Germany, under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, Yimach Shimo, had overrun most of Europe. Japan had a pact with the Germany and Italy, making the three country allies. Japan had invaded China. And you should know that Japan was, did horrible, horrible things to the Chinese. The Imamish murdered hundreds of thousands of Chinese in horrible, horrible ways. Okay, we're going to stop here. Uh, for today, uh, and we'll, I'll show you one picture of a, a submarine, and uh, we'll continue more tomorrow. Mwah, I love you.